This morning we're going to get into anchor theory uh, as a getting started type of application. There's some basic things that we need to understand and contemplate when we're establishing our anchors and determining what function those anchors are going to serve. One of the first components that we need to consider is force in, force out, or force, mu force multiplier applications in regards to anchors. So the basic theory is um, when you rig your rope to the load, the force or the weight of that load correlates directly to the anchor that is supporting that rope system that's going to the load. If that rope redirects itself through a change of direction pulley, then there is a force in and force out concept in which whatever is coming into the pulley must come out of that pulley and generate the sums of those two forces at the anchor. So if we had a 300 pound design load or a 300 pound load that the rope was attached to, that rope progressed to our primary anchor, went through a change of direction pulley, then in theory the 300 pounds going into the pulley would also be coming out of the pulley, resulting in 600 pounds at the anchor. We're going to talk about these forces in two different types of applications, theoretical and actual. The actual application of those forces and loads uh, is dependent upon the amount of friction that is generated between the relationship of the type of rope, the stretch of rope, the diameter of the rope, as well as its correlation to the pulleys and to the other components that are in the system. Every one of those components, as well as edge transitions um, and any redirectional components, create ad additional force to that system that makes that um, perceived or potential force or load relationship very hypothetical. As we add more appliances or pulleys, as we add more edges, as we add more components to that system, making, taking it beyond that relationship I just discussed of a single rope coming to the anchor and a single rope coming out of the anchor, every one of those components correlate to additional friction. You can think of it loosely like friction loss in a hose, only it's a friction multiplier. So the more appliances we put in place, the more contact surfaces we have in place, the less productive our systems are, and the more force we are generated to manipulate, we are generated to manipulate that load. So when we're looking at anchors and analyzing our anchors, we want to follow a basic progression. That basic progression should start with, ideally, a single bomb-proof anchor. When we identify that single bomb-proof anchor, we want to evaluate its purpose. Is it for a lower haul system? Is it for a directional? Or is it for the belay? It is possible to use single anchor systems for multiple applications. It's all based on a common sense and accurate assessment of that anchor and its ability to withstand the load and the forces that are going to be applied to it. Typically speaking in rescue applications, we are looking at design loads that will support 600 pound loads. Um, because we're contemplating that whole two rescuer theory with each rescuer representing a 300 pound coefficient. Now, the better we get at rope and the more um, tangible assessment we have of our loads, the more we can start to make that coefficient a little more realistic. For example, if we're bringing up a child or a teenager or a light load individual, we can accurately assess their weight to be significantly less than 300 pounds and where we need to make adjustments as long as we're doing them from an informed position, we can make those adjustments in our rigging uh, and the design load rate, ratings that we utilize for our gear. So back to our anchor application with that single bomb proof anchor, thinking about a three or 600 pound load depending on my rescue application. I want to look at the, the overall weight of that load and in this example we use 600 pounds. I want to identify that single bomb proof anchor and I want to determine whether I'm going to rig my systems into this anchor and regenerate them back to the load itself or use this as a directional component and run these systems to an additional anchor. Either way, I need to ensure that my load in and my force out to manipulate this load <clears throat> is going to correlate to an appropriate sized anchor for this system. As I rig additional elements to the system, I need to do the same thing. 
and continue to analyze whether this anchor will sustain all the forces that I am applying to it. That's a basic approach initially for that first desired component, a single bomb proof anchor. Um, as I discussed, if we need to redirect this system elsewhere, then that's where this single bomb proof system uh, does not have a haul lane intact or is not an adequate environment to, to support all of the operations that we're going to put in place on this line. In that application, it becomes a directional. And then we're looking for an additional single bomb proof anchor where we can simply put in a change of direction pulley here and redirect this system where we do have an appropriate haul, line, haul lane or perhaps multiple anchors that will facilitate other operational components of the sequence of events that we're getting ready to encounter. If we don't have a single bomb proof anchor that supports our load and our force in and force out contemplations of anchor forces, then the next easiest option is to look directly in line behind that primary anchor that is in the location that you want it to be in. So we'll call this anchor, anchor marginal as opposed to bomb proof. So it looks moderately substantial, but it does not look significant enough to support all the loads that we're going to apply. If we look directly behind the load and we see another anchor in line with that load, and we believe that this anchor is sufficient or adequate to support this anchor, then we're going to create a multi-anchor system that is in line utilizing a tension back tie. So in this application, we would perhaps wrap that primary anchor with an anchor strap, have either our change of direction or the hub of our lower hull system, belay, whatever the application is. And then to support this primary anchor, we would implement our tension back tie coming back to this secondary anchor. <clears throat> it's important with tension back ties that we follow an angulation with our systems that accurately supports or adequately supports that primary anchor. So we need to look at how this anchor is fixed. Is it in the ground? Is it supported from a roof component and a ground component? How is it sustained? We need to look at the weakest areas of that anchor and try and integrate this tension back tie so that it supports that weakest component. The theology behind this tension back tie is that if this anchor starts to shift towards the load because it is being overloaded, the purpose of the tension back tie is to stop that movement and start to carry some of that load that is being applied and translate it back to this secondary anchor that's in line behind that system. So our first objective again was a single bomb proof anchor. If we don't have that, our second objective is to look to an inline multi-anchor system utilizing a tension back tie. If that is not available, then we're going to start to look laterally. So we'll use a tension back tie or posterior anchor support theology or application um, from a lateral perspective. So coming behind this single anchor that's ideally located in line with our load, we may not have an additional support anchor behind this one, but we may have multiple lateral anchors in relationship to this primary anchor. In this application, we're going to jump to either load sharing or load distributing type, type anchor systems. These can be as simplistic as tension back ties that run back to these two anchors, or they can be simple anchor systems from these two anchors that correlate to either kill points for load sharing applications or travel points for load distributing applications. Either way, the same principle is present in that we're trying to carry the load as this shifts forward or potentially becomes overloaded. We're trying to support that primary anchor by spreading that load to multiple points laterally behind this primary anchor. The last option is when we don't have this primary anchor, but we have multiple marginal lateral anchors. 